My name is Rochelle, and I'm going to show you how to make recycled book pumpkins. Now these are pumpkins that have been made out of books that were ready for the recycle bin. They were weeded, we tried to sell them, we tried giving them away for free, we just couldn't do it. So this is what we're doing with them. So don't worry, we're not using best sellers. So I have a couple examples of pumpkins that I've made. This is the first one I did. Uh, it's a little special. Um, I made this one using regular Elmer's glue, which I imagine most people will have available at home. It takes a little more time and involves kind of, you know, being able to wait for things to dry, you know. And then here's a bigger one that I made uh, using hot glue. Obviously the process of using hot glue makes it go a lot faster. I also spray painted this with orange spray paint that I found and I added some glitter because glitter makes everything better. Uh, you can choose to spray paint your pumpkin before you start fluffing it out which might make the color a little more consistent or what I did was I spray painted it after I had already kind of fluffed everything out so you can kind of see little bits of spray paint inside of it insides there. So, so to start, you're going to want to have a 8.5 by 11 piece of paper, um, something that will fit the size of your book um, fairly well. You want to have a pumpkin that takes up most of the book. What you can do is fold it in half and then draw, like, draw half a pumpkin shape, kind of like a heart but with a flatter bottom and then cut it out and then once you've opened it up you see if it looks like a decent shape here's one that I've already got cut out and that's what you're going to use to trace your pumpkin I will provide some templates in the take-home kits which will be this shape roughly if you want or you can make your own template but I will try to include templates that are relatively comparable to the size of the book you end up using. So once you have your template, you can do this before or after, you're going to have a book. And you're going to want to take the cover off this book. And it's going to be painful, I know. It's going to hurt. But you've got to do it for the sake of making a craft. So you want to start with a book that's Probably paperback is the easiest because they have looser spines and they're easy to, easier to manipulate. And then if you've got an old library book, we tend to tape the first page to the inside of the cover. So you might want to remove that first page as well. And then you'll just peel it off. Bye-bye cover. Then you'll have this book without a cover. I like to kind of loosen up the spine before I start cutting anything. Uh, kind of flatten it out. Do exactly what you're not supposed to do with books, which is just kind of start bending the spine a little. Loosen that up because you're going to be folding this in half in order to make your pumpkin shape. All right. So now we've got a book that's all ready to be cut. So what you'll do is you'll take your template and you'll start on the front and just trace. that scissors are easier to work with but if you have an exacto knife that can help you get more precise with your cutting but then after I've traced out my template I can go ahead take about five pages at a time I wouldn't do more than that because uh, it gets hard to cut and just cut around your traced half pumpkin shape When 
again, if you want to have some good sharp scissors that allow you to get kind of in the towards the uh, spine here, it gets a little harder to cut. That's where an X-Acto knife might come in handy, or you can kind of rip it a little bit, like this is going to get hidden. And then after you've cut this out, you'll just peel off the extra page pieces, set those to the side, and then you'll go ahead and trace again. You don't need your original template anymore, because now you've got a built-in template right here. So the key with this template from now on, you want to cut just inside that traced line or else you're going to end up having a pumpkin that slowly and progressively just gets bigger and bigger and it's going to be lopsided. So then after you've traced, you grab about five more sheets or whatever's manageable. Some sheets are a little thicker than others, obviously. And then you cut. And you cut just inside that line that you drew. From here on out, you make sure you are cutting inside the line just a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit. And you can kind of pull that little rip, then rip off the extra page, trace again, and you will keep doing this until you have cut through the entire book. Every once in a while you'll want to make sure you're not overcorrecting. Looks like I've been kind of cutting too far inside my lines. So just kind of reassess your cutting technique to make sure you're not going to have a lopsided pumpkin. Looks like I was cutting too far inside that line. So we'll just correct that. Doesn't need to be perfect. It's a craft pumpkin, so obviously there's going to be some imperfections, but that's part of the fun. It looks like my tops and bottoms are trying to drift out a little bit, so I want to make extra sure I start cutting a little farther inside the line when I'm down here on the bottom. And when I get up to the top, it's easy to forget to cut farther inside the line at those points. All right. got a little bit of a top to trim off here. Or I guess you could leave it if you wanted to. It'd be a stem. Um, but I like to go out and grab actual branches and uh, use that. It gives it a little bit of a rustic look. So, I mean, you can choose to leave the top of the spine there. Otherwise, I, I like to cut it off. Just make sure you got strong scissors for that. And now we have our book pumpkin and now is time to start gluing. Again you can use regular crafting glue, school glue. Uh, for this video I'm going to use hot glue to speed up the process. It's a bit easier if you've got it, definitely use it. Otherwise um, you might want to have some clips, maybe some paper clips handy to help hold some pages together. It might take a few hours to dry before you start proceeding with the rest of the gluing and fluffing if you are using Elmer's glue. The glue is especially important for the spine here. We're going to use it to keep it held open. Um, if you use Elmer's glue, you're probably going to want to hold it in place with some clips and then probably wait about 24 hours for it to really dry before proceeding. But to save time for this video, I will be using hot glue. So 
let's pursue the pot glue. Before I start gluing, I wanted to point out that this is a good time to color the edges of your pumpkin. Um, as I said before, I had spray painted it after I fluffed it out, but you could spray paint it now. I do have this Krylon Color Master. This is what I used to spray. I'm not going to do that because I want to be able to film this indoors. So what I'm going to do is use a marker. And I'm just going to use a marker. Because my pages are a little uh, rough, it's kind of difficult to get it to be even. It might, this might work better maybe with a crayon for paint if you would like. But since I started, I'm just going to keep plugging away at this. See, that's why you got to be sure to try and keep this as even as possible because it just makes everything more difficult when it's uneven. A little bit of unevenness is obviously kind of cool, but there's limits. I don't know how much this is going to stand out when it's all fluffed out. This might be a waste of time. Who knows? There we go. So at this point, we're going to fold it about in half. Is I'm going to take my hot glue gun. Again, you can use regular glue, it's just gonna take a while. You're gonna have to be patient. And just squeeze it in the spine here. And then close it up. Close it up. You want to use high temp glue. I've noticed low temp glue dries too quickly to be able to hold this together. Okay. Now that the spine is secure, I'm going to take a bit more glue and glue these two pages. Looks like they already started gluing together, which is good because I wanted that. Just kind of screw it in there and then close these pages together. Right. Now, at this point, I'm honestly surprised I haven't burned myself yet. Spoke too soon. Okay, so at this point, you're going to want to stand it up. We're going to fluff it out. I mean, we've already kind of got this general pumpkin shape. You could leave it like that. It'd be really rough looking. But we're going to just start slowly spreading chunks around, pulling them the side. Just do what you can to kind of spread the pages apart. Just take a chunk at a time, pull it. Actually, um, and then use little bits of glue where you need it to help fluff it. You might, it might actually be easier to go there are different ways of doing this, obviously. Um, so I'm going to take a little bit of glue. Just start using it to help keep it fluffed out. I mean, just find whatever way works for you, whatever way works best. I feel like it kind of depends on the book. Kind of just depends on the type of glue you're using. If you are using Elmer's glue, it might be helpful to, if you've got a few pages that just want to keep staying apart, if you glue them together, you're going to probably want to use a paper clip to hold these pages together until they dry. And uh, especially with the Elmer's glue, that's going to run a lot more, so you definitely want something to protect your table. You can tell it's already starting to stay. You can also use, even if you did use hot glue for the rest of it, maybe some a little bit of dab of Elmer's glue there might work better for helping to kind of keep this the pages spaced apart. 
see it's starting, but it still needs some more fluffing, so I'm going to keep fluffing. All right, so for the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and say that I've fluffed this enough. You can keep going. I think this is probably as good as it's really going to get. Usually I have one side that looks better than the others. So we'll just have that side face out. And then we will glue on a stick. Sometimes I end up having a little hole in there and I can stick the stick in the hole, but I don't this time. So we're just gonna hot glue. stick and then I like to cut some ribbon to give it a bit of a leaf and there's my little book pumpkin um, I'm gonna let this stick sit there a little longer just before I start picking it up because it's just gonna fall apart if you try picking it up by the stick too soon. So it looks like the marker option before didn't make it very colorful. So again, I could always spray paint it with this. I also uh, it's kind of hard to see in the video with this one, but I added this spray glitter to the top as well. It just adds a little sparkle. And so, there you go. There is a recycled book pumpkin. I will have kits here at the library available, uh, first come, first serve. Uh, the kit will include a paperback book and a stencil for you to trace and a little bit of ribbon for you to use but I'm gonna go ahead and let you pick out your own stick because I'm sure you can find a place to get one come and pick up a kit while they're available and otherwise you can easily do this yourself with supplies I'm sure you can find at home that's it happy crafting